Glendale, Arizona at Camelback Ranch, home of the Los Angeles Dodgers and Chicago White Sox. But today, it's the Dodgers playing host to your Texas Rangers. Brandon McCarthy goes for Los Angeles. Nick Tepish for the Rangers this afternoon. And hello again, folks. Dave Ramit with Mark McLemore as we wind this thing down. Now, today, Jeff Bannister and man of the rotation for the Rangers. That means today, Nick Tepish pitching for a spot in the bullpen. He is. Nick Tepish is going to go for that long reliever spot in the bullpen. So he's still got to go out and pitch well. And in his last outing against the Angels Tuesday, he went five strong innings, gave up four hits, three runs on 68 pitches. So he stressed it out a little bit. And he retired 15 of the last 18 batters he faced. And that's the type of performance the Rangers are going to be looking for, for from Nick Tepish. Indeed, if it's not how you start, how you finish, it was great last time out for him, and he wants to solidify that this afternoon. So we'll have it for you right here. Stay with us. We'll have the starting lineups, the first pitch. It's the Rangers at the Dodgers today in the desert. Trust Mr. Alec. Texas Rangers baseball on TXA 21 is sponsored by Dallas Truck World. Visit us at DallasTruckWorld.com. Well, one of those days in the desert. Lots of sunshine. There's going to be plenty of heat today as well here at Camelback Ranch, in Glendale, Arizona. Brandon McCarthy, take of the hill for Los Angeles. This ballpark, an interesting one for fans here. Just not a lot of shade. As we start it off tonight with the Rangers lineup, Leonis Martin leading it off in center field. Shinsu Chu gets that start in the outfield today. That'll be something we keep an eye on. Beltre, Fielder, Rua in the middle of the order. Moreland as the DH, and then it's Andrews Corporan and Odor to wrap things up for the Rangers. And it will be good to see Chu get back in the outfield. We've talked a lot about it the last couple of days, Matt, but Chu hasn't had an opportunity to play defensively lately. Today, he'll get out there and try it out. He will. This is, and they'll be facing Brandon McCarthy. This will be his fourth start in spring training. Last year, he sta established a, a bunch of career highs. Uh, Ten wins, 175 strikeouts, 200 innings. So he's been a workhorse. And, just signed a four-year contract with this Dodger organization. So this will be the first of four for Brandon McCarthy. I've been well-traveled in recent years. And the guy who, he's one of the, in the ball player ranks anyway, one of the 
first to come out and really embraced all the analytics. And he's tried to reinvent himself, throwing more sinkers and trying to induce more ground balls as a result of all the information that has become available and parsed so closely these days. And feels like that has contributed to his ability to extend his career just a little bit here in the big leagues. Well, I think it has. You look at his numbers, especially what he was able to do last year, and that's exactly what it says. Pitching 200 innings was healthy, and that's really been the key for him. He's been healthy the last few years. Tall right-hander, six foot seven. And he winds it up, and we are underway as he pumps in strike one. And see, Martin has managed to knock a couple out this spring. And taking over that leadoff role, and there's no real debate about that now. I mean, last year, got a chance to work in that leadoff spot, did real well, and this year, that's the expectation. They don't have it all season. Well, he worked in the leadoff spot a lot last year, and they wanted to see exactly what he could do. And uh, he played it very well. He was aggressive sometimes, or sometimes he would take pitches and work his way on, work the pitcher a little bit. But you can't take away the aggressiveness that Leonis Martini has, and they haven't. And he's shown that, hey, he can hit at the top of the lineup. Now he's got to be able to do it from day one as opposed to maybe half of the season last year. 1-2 from McCarthy. And that'll square it. Mac mentioned McCarthy signing an extended deal with the Dodgers, four years. Last year split time with the Diamondbacks and the Yankees. And Martin lifts one to straightaway center field. And that one carrying over Heisey's head and bounces up off the wall. And Leonis Martin starts the game with a double. It's a good bet by Martin. Got the two strikes, two and two count. Gets a fastball up and out over the plate. See, he stays with it, stays on it, doesn't try to pull it, doesn't try to do too much with it, just goes with it and hits it over the center fielder's head. Heisey thought he had a play on it, but the ball kept tailing away into that left center field gap. So this is the kind of start that the Rangers are looking for. They want that leadoff guy to be able to get on base and create some havoc.
retires the Rangers first baseman and there are two gone but the runners do advance
at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Fans here enjoying the sunshine and the warm weather. Of course, if you come to a game at this ballpark, Camelback Ranch, you better enjoy the sunshine. There aren't, <laughs> there aren't too many shaded portions of this place. Well, that's what it's all about. Spring, you have the sun, you come sure. out to watch, watch baseball, that's what it's all about. Yeah. You don't want to come out and sit in the shade, do you? I might. Maybe in Texas. <laughs> but well, <laughs> not here, not right now, not in March. Now, maybe here in June, July, yes, but March? I don't know. You want to go down there and sit out in that sun? Oh, I'm good right here. <laughs> <laughs> Howie Kendrick leading it off. And it's one and one. Tepish was pretty sharp there in that first inning. And now the heart of the order here with the second. Kendrick, nine years with the Angels. Moves across town to the Dodgers. And it's one and two. Oh yeah, just, just enjoying the sunshine. And the sweat is sort of fouled off. It look. I haven't sat out here and enjoyed a game, but I, I did run into Mike Anderson, one of the Rangers. Very good scouts, and uh, he was tucked away in the shade today. I asked him about it. He, he was wearing long pants, long sleeve shirt, had a hat on, and everything. Kendrick pops this one foul. No play for fielder. I saw well, you're, you're lucky. You got the, you know, you're in the shade. You're in good shape. Yeah, well, the problem is I've got to go back behind on plate eventually, and I got to hide from that sun, man. It is brutal out here at the ballpark. They built it so that fans could take in the view of the mountains see there you go look at it but they turned the ballpark maybe some would argue slightly the wrong way and, and didn't provide any shade for the fans well can you actually see the mountains from down there i know we can see no, them you're, from you, up here it's funny you and i could see it from right. up here but you can't really down there two two Tepper's trying to get him on a curveball there you see him off in the distance There are some, some beautiful vistas down here in Arizona. And sometimes you just have to turn the stadium a little bit so you can see it. 3-2 bounced up the middle, but like Lagor had it played perfectly and retires Kendrick for out number one. Ed was shaded just a little bit up the middle. Made that a borderline ET play point. Tepes threw the ball exactly where he had his defense played, and that's what you want to see. You want to see that starting pitcher hit his spots at that location. He hits the location. He's going to be out there for not very long, and that defense is going to be positioned just right to make the plays behind him. It looks like they set up in a very similar spot for Scott Van Slyke. Who pops it the other way, and Odor is plenty of time to get out there into short right field and retire Van Slyke. Tepes able to get inside on Van Slyke. Jammed him a little bit and popped him up with a little blooper out to Odor out there. Odor's getting some work in this, this inning. See Corcoran set up inside. Tepes throws it right where Corcoran set up. Again, it's, it's all about that location. Yes, you like seeing guys throw hard, obviously, but it's about location, location, location. Wow, so far, so good for Tepish. Try the first five Dodgers he's faced. And starts Carl Crawford off with strike one. Crawford, 14 years in the big leagues. And it's two and one. Just a terrific athlete. And loaded with so much promise is Tepish. Working at a nice, steady pace here. Comes right after him inside. Everything's been in on Crawford. 
know what I really like about that. He's throwing in and he's not missing inside. He may not be throwing it for a strike, but when he misses, he's missing off the plate in where he's not going to get hurt. Crawford hits it sharply down to first, but right to Prince Fielder, and it's another one, two, three inning for Nick Tepish. And it takes us to the third on this sunny Sunday afternoon in the desert. Nothing, nothing. First two innings, 13 pitches in the first, 13 pitches in the second, and predominantly strikes. Six up, six down. He's looked very good. It's nice to keep that pitch count down. 13 pitches an inning, that's pretty good. So he's done that the first couple of innings. But yes, it's very important that he keep that pitch count down because if he does that, obviously, the longer he's going to be able to go. So two innings down, we go to the third. And Odor to lead things off. Batting ninth today for the Rangers. And it takes a strike from Brandon McCarthy. This should be an interesting year for Odor. You know, last year, came up. Had a necessity. Did pretty well. Now he's having a great spring. The expectation is that you're a, an everyday big leaguer now. Allows him to approach things just a little bit differently. And he strikes out swinging to start the third, but he's just brimming with confidence, and he has played well this spring. Yeah, that's one thing he does not lack, and that's confidence. You know, he played well, came up last year, like you said, he played well, established himself, and, and let everybody know he can play every day and be productive at the big league level and he's trying to continue that here now this year is going to be a year full of adjustments because a lot of the things that he saw last year from pitching staffs he's not going to see they're going to make that adjustment to him and then it's going to be his turn to make the adjustments to them so this this will be a, a very interesting year for him to see how he handles it Meanwhile, Leonis Martin fouled off a bunt attempt for strike one. Big Brandon McCarthy, after allowing a, a leadoff double to Martin and then walking Shinsu Chu, he has retired seven in a row. He's trying for that inside corner just as Tepish was last inning. Two one. And Martin committed, it seems, to the concept of the bunt. Led the league last year with 17 bunt singles. Used that speed to get 32 infield hits as well. So he was adept at getting it done. 
Well, that's a huge weapon in his arsenal, so he's got to be able to use it. And what it also does is it brings that third baseman in. He brings that third baseman in, the pitcher throws the ball outside. He can go up there's a left-hander up. He can drive that ball right by the third baseman because he's in a little bit too far to be able to react to, react to something hit hard at him by, uh, by Martin. Playoff pitch, and that one misses low. And he's on for the second time today. I think it'll be interesting to see if those numbers go up this year. I mean, last year, he started 35 games in the leadoff spot. Well, this year, he stands to start a whole lot more than that. And I don't know if that's, you know, if it's your weapon, maybe it's just your weapon no matter where you're hitting. Or I'll throw it at you, you know, as now a leadoff guy, would he be tempted or in position to use the bunt more often? Well, I don't really know that. I don't. I don't think that he's going to use it anymore. He may end up with more hits, just because. Yeah, he probably will do it more. He'll have more at bats, and the majority of those at bats will come in that leadoff spot. But I don't think he's going to, you know, end up with 35 bunt base hits. He may end up with, you know, somewhere, you know, in the mid 20s, 20 to 25 in that area. But a lot of that too depends on the situation of the game. If they're in, if they're in a good situation, then yes, it's a good time to bunt. If not, then uh, you know, laying down a bunt for a base hit isn't always a, a good time to do it. There's a, not always that good time to do it when you're down or, or way behind. One and one on Chu. Chu, as he's wont to do, had a lengthy and, and good at bat in the first inning, which he eventually walked. A selective hitter. Keeping an eye on Martin. Leonis, I think each of the last two years, he's stolen right in the neighborhood of 30 bases. It's a decent lead, and he's going. And the pitch is a high strike to throw to second. Way late, and Martin has a stolen base. Nice jump, nice read by Martin. 1-1 one, one pitch, got a breaking ball. I'm sure he was looking to get a breaking ball. And it was just absolutely no chance for Ellis to throw out Martin on that one. 31 steals last year, 36 stolen bases the year before. So that stands to be an important part of his game again this year again. Especially in that leadoff spot. Chu takes one outside. It's two and two. You know, that speed element is going to play big for this Rangers ball club, especially at the top of the order. And even when Martin's not in there, hopefully uh, Lionel Shields will have that opportunity. But that speed element, you just you just can't teach that. Now we saw it yesterday with the Shields. He, he definitely exploited that part of his game. Out stays two and two on Shinsu Chu. Had a six pitch at bat his first time up. This will be the sixth pitch of this at bat for Chu. Bannister had a conversation yesterday with some of the reporters about. Pitch is seen per at bat. So the guy is true. He lines this one into right field. Base hit. Good start by Martin. He's headed to the plate. The throw is offline and cut off. And the Rangers get on the board first on Chu's RBI single. This is the kind of baseball the Rangers are hoping to see a lot of this year. You get Martin getting on to lead things off or to get on base. Steal, steal second, get into scoring position for those two, three, four hitters behind him. Chu worked the count to two and two, saw six pitches. That six pitch he hit, squirts the single into right field for an RBI single. I love Chu in that in that two hole. He's going to get a lot of fastballs to hit because he's got the big boys. Not that he can't hit 20 home runs, he can, but you've got Adrian Beltre, Prince. You've got that, that, that duo coming up behind you, so he's going to see a lot of good pitches to hit. I'll trade dancing away from strike one. That you had 
13 home runs last year. Beltre, let's see, with 19 last season. But yeah, fielder, healthy this year. That could be huge. Rua and Moreland also following. Pitch out is on, and Chu not going anywhere. It's one and one. I don't think Chu's quite ready to run and test out that ankle to see if he can steal bases again. He'll get there at some point. Double play depth up the middle. Chu not going anywhere, and that one comes in. And sounded like it might have quit Beltre, but apparently not. Chu able to get to second base, though, on the wild pitch. You know, if it did clip him a little bit, I don't think he'd want to go first. I think he really just wants to hit, especially right now. <laughs> Watch yourself. <laughs> so two and one. And we mentioned McCarthy's been coming inside a lot. Leaves this one over the plate, and Beltre smashes it to center. Eyes even a long run, and he can't get to it. It's a late start at second for Chu, but they'll wave him to the plate. Beltre takes a turn, and he'll hold with the RBI double. Rangers lead 2-0. got a pitch out over the plate from McCarthy. McCarthy came inside, missed inside, brushed him back a little bit, and then tried to go to the outside part of the plate. They got too much of the middle of the plate. You see A.J. Ellis set up on the outside part of the plate. That ball tailed back over the, over the middle part of it. And that's a mistake, and good hitters don't miss those mistakes, especially high in the zone, and Beltre didn't miss that one. Drove it a long way to straightaway center field. A walk, a single, a double, all coming with one out. And Prince Fielder takes strike one. Well, the number on the screen right there that jumps out at you, not any of those averages or counting numbers. It's the one up top there. Last season, 42 games. Shocking number for Fielder as he will roll it to second. Kendrick takes care of him, and that's the second out of the inning. Beltre moves up to third. And with two outs, it'll be up to Rua again to try and get an extra runner home. Rua rolled out in the first inning. Then at second and third, that ended the threat. Takes a high strike. Last year, with that call up, he impressed down the stretch. Really did a nice job, particularly at the plate. This year, coming into spring training, I think there was hope that he would show himself well here and, and maybe just grab that open left field position. And he more or less has. Hasn't been announced as this one bounced up the middle. Nice backhand by Kendrick. And it's not in time. Gonzalez had to really stretch it out up the line. Just to grab it, but Rua is safe, an infield hit, Beltre scores, and the Rangers lead 3-0. Rua comes up with a big hit, chops this ball right back up the box. Kendra goes a long way, makes a spectacular throw, and pulls Gonzalez off the back just a little bit. That's a great play by Howie Kendrick. That throw's on target. Ah. Probably still beats it out, but that's a great play by Howie Kendrick. You know, off the bat, I, I could hardly imagine him having a real play at him, but nearly did pull it off, and now Mitch Moreland. And he'll bounce one to the right side. Kendrick's in great position. Makes it look easy, and the inning is over. But the Rangers get on the board first. They post three runs on three hits. And we'll go to the bottom of the third. Rangers three, Dodgers nothing.
Rangers in a nice spot here early. Jeff Bannister chatting with a couple of the boys on the bench between innings. Always teaching. Always teaching. You know, you, you've got to love that communication. He's, you know, obviously first-year manager and first year with a lot of these guys. And just having that communication, that's what's important. You know, I've talked to a lot of the, a lot of the guys on the team, and that's typically the first thing that they say about Jeff Bannister. He lets you know where you are. He comes to see how you're doing. He wants to know how you're feeling. And, and that's really important. Having that open line of communication with your players and with the manager just goes back and forth. It makes the, the players a little bit more comfortable. So if they've got something on their minds, hey, if, or if they're not feeling very good and may not be able to go out there and play, they don't have a problem being able to go up to him and say, hey, Ben, I think I, I can't make it today. I can't, I can't get out there today. So that goes a long way in the communication. Buck Britton sends one into right field, and he is the first Dodgers base runner of the afternoon. That just goes down away with a fastball, and Buck Britton was able to get that bat hit out and pull it to right field. You know, I like what Tempest is doing. Gave up a hit there, but he's filling that strike zone up with strikes, quality strikes. Now we'll deal with A.J. Ellis and starts him off with strike one. Yeah. Ellis largely Clayton Kershaw's personal catcher and has carved out a nice job for him. Snap it out first and Britton back in there. Corporan has a very good arm and a lot of success throwing out runners while with the Astros. And not afraid to send it down that first baseline. It's one of those things, you know, if you're a first baseman, there's certain catchers where you gotta be on your toes, you gotta be ready. <laughs> and you know, you find out who those guys are very quickly. <laughs> That one. Count one and two. Yeah. Oh, nice play, you. Nice work. Stretched out a little bit, didn't he? I like it. He does too. Tapish ahead in the count one and two. And just misses. A little bit low, and that's what Jeff Bannister spoke about this morning with Tepish. Talking about what he wanted to see from him. He said he wanted to see him effective with a fastball low in the zone. And you can see he's working on that lower portion of the strike zone. Well, Ellis went down and got this one. Lines it to center, and Martin circles around it and makes the catch. Skip the beat there. <laughs> huh? He took off like that ball was going to be over his head, but realized, hey, I think I went a little too far. Wasn't hit quite as hard as he thought, but he was able to recover. A little basket catch there. Hey, as long as you catch it, that's all that matters. That's it. That's it. Now Brandon McCarthy, he's trying to bunt. That's strike one. Now there were there are managers who aren't fans of the basket style catch. No, and I, and I really don't. Uh, I don't think guys do it intentionally. I think that was that was just a necessity right there. So I don't think uh, I don't know of anybody that goes out there and intentionally does a basket catch. Oh, McCarthy again. Can't get it down. Fouls that one off. Strike two. Well, I mean, it's going back a little ways. Remember Daryl Thomas, former Dodger? I do remember Daryl Thomas. Daryl G. He, he, he used to get himself in a occasional <laughs> hot water because, he, you know, there are some hot dogs every now and then who like to style a little bit out there. And, and that was one of his things. Not all the time, but 
<laughs> he find himself in a little trouble every once in a while. That's right, in that case, I mean, that was obvious. That was a reaction. The necessity had to do it. Just like McCarthy, feeling like he had to bunt, but bunts it foul with two strikes. And thusly is the second out of the inning. The top of the order now for Jimmy Rollins. Now Don Mattingly has seen his team muster just one hit, one base runner so far today against Nick Tepish. Now the second time through the order, beginning right here with Rollins. We learned today before the ball game that the rotation is now set for the Rangers. Jeff Bannister naming Nick Martinez the fifth starter, such that it is. I mean, those things are a matter of nomenclature more than anything else. When I mean, you're one of five starters, you don't know exactly where everybody's going to come down at all times. But Martinez in the rotation, and that means Tepish today working to solidify a spot as the long man in the bullpen, and so far has put it himself quite nicely. Yeah, he's done a tremendous job today so far, and, you know, being that long guy, I mean, you're, you're, you're going to pitch, because not every starter is going to be able to go five or six innings every time out. Uh, he'll be counted on to do a spot start if he ends up getting that, that bullpen spot, but you need a guy that has been a starting pitcher to fill that role. I like that better than trying to piece two or three guys out of the bullpen to get together to try and get five or six innings if that starting pitcher blows things up. Ryan Ander ready. A little bit high rounds and another snap to go down to Prince Fielder. All right, I'm all right with it. a little tougher play I would think for first baseman when the catcher was around the back of a left-handed hitter well not particularly if you're watching and, and really it's all about footwork you just got to be in position to catch the ball and put the tag on. Rollins has gone deep to right field and that one bounces over the fence for an automatic double and will save a run because Britain so he likely would have sworn had that stayed in the yard is going to be required to return to third base. So those for the hard for the hard uh, track out there. That ball bounced up and went over the wall because otherwise, yes, the Dodgers do have a run. Britton was flying around second base. He was going to make it easily. See, Tepes drops a curveball on Rollins. Rollins stays right with it. One hops the ball off the wall. Into the dugout, into the bullpen. Yeah, that, those big kangaroo bounces give it, and they take it away. We've seen games where it's just killed some guys, and here it actually helps Tepish. At least momentarily keeps that run from scoring. Chris Heisey, who flat out to left field in the first inning. It's Britton at third, Rollins at second for the Dodgers. And Heisey fouls one off for strike one. Britain, number 81 over the minor league side. And Jimmy Rollins. Big acquisition in the offseason. Switch hitting shortstop. Long time Philadelphia Philly. Heisey, the former Cincinnati Red. 
We're talking about managers at the front of the inning, Mac, and the communication with Jeff Bannister and, and his players. You played so, for some interesting characters. Lou Pinella immediately jumps to mind. Oh, you know, like, Lou, was he that kind of a communicator, or was he just more of a demanding... I, I think the outside, he, he seems like the kind of demanding presence. There's a character. You know, I, I think people have uh, Lou Pinella misunderstood. He wasn't very demanding. He, he, he demanded two things from you. Number one, be on time. Number two, play as hard as you can. That was it. That was it. Now, if you didn't do one of those one of those two things, that's when you saw the side that we typically see right, right. on highlights. But if you did that, you were fine with him. That's all you can ask. You know, if you didn't have the results, you didn't have the results. But as long as you put the effort in, he was fine with it. But, yes, he had some uh, monumental blow-ups. Unfortunately, you know, the four years or three years that I played for him, we won a lot of ball games, so yeah. I didn't see that very often with him. <laughs> the payoff to Heisey. And he'll get another one. Other real good communicators you played for? Uh, Johnny Oates was a very good communicator. Oh, yeah. uh, played for Joe Madden in the minor leagues. Uh, the Angels, so a tremendous communicator. Still is, always will be, I'm sure. But uh, I was with Johnny for eight years, five here in uh, Texas, and three in Baltimore, so that was a long time. Heisey, this one to right, and it's shallow right. Two can't get there in time. Two runs score on the bloop single by Chris Heisey. spot here. I think it's a pretty good pitch down the way. Heisen just happened to stay with it and dropped it in the right field. Not a thing that you can do about that. So two out, two run RBI. Things don't get any easier now with Adrian Gonzalez up there. And strike one. Now he had Rollins to two strikes, lost him on the double. Had Heisey to two strikes, lost him on that little blue. Real nice year last year for Adrian Gonzalez. But he's in a hole on the two. Rangers put a, you know, that big shift on for a power hitting lefty. there in short right field. Beltre very lonely over there on the left side of the infield. Runner going. Try it again. Now Tepes threw 26 pitches in the first two innings. This will be his 26th pitch of this inning. Well, more work in that searing sun today. Can't get Gonzalez to chase. One and two. Very careful with Gonzalez. Saw the numbers last year, the 27 home runs, and Dodger Stadium, not an easy place to hit the ball out, throw over to first again as they check in on Heisey. What do you think about that division, Matt? I mean, Pacto Park is a tough, tough hitter's park. You know, again, at least for power. San Diego, they finally moved the fences in a little bit, and that's helped some, but... It's tough to put up power numbers in the National League West. Gonzalez shoots this one the other way. Ruhr with a long run, and that one off the top of the fence. Heisey will score easily from first, and Gonzalez just in under the tag. We're tied. You 
see why Gonzalez is very, very dangerous. You've got to be careful with him. This guy can hit, hit for average, hit for power, drive in runs. He uses the entire ballpark. You see, he gets a fastball up out over the zone, out up over the plate. Stays back on it, drives it. Thought he had it there. You see Rule going back. Ball hits off the top of the wall at about a foot left. Great play by Martin backing up. They almost had a play on Gonzalez at second base. You see Ruggi over there. Elvis makes the cut. Flips it over to Ruggi at second. Almost had him. And Odor still walking off the contact out there. Mr. Kevin Harmon getting a little TV time out there, checking on Odor. It didn't look like a a real bad hit out there at second base. I'm sure you had your incidents out there. Never got touched. Please. <laughs> My shins would differ would, would make sure. a difference right sure. about now. <laughs> That's a tough gig. It is. You get, you know, working around that bag, you get spiked a lot, you get cut a lot. You see Gonzalez going in there. You know, I think they just uh a knee to a knee. Yeah. Maybe a shin kind of hyperextended that left knee there. It doesn't feel very good. Well, and as we said, when Gonzalez came up for Tepish, things didn't get any easier. It's still no picnic with Howie Kendrick. He swings and lines this one in the left center. Chases Gonzalez home. RBI single by Kendrick. And for the first time today, the Dodgers lead. It's four to three. The previous three batters for Kendrick, Kepis was able to get him to get him the two strikes, but not able to finish him off. And then with Kendrick, set first pitch, jumps on that first fastball he sees, drills it, drills it into left center field to drive Gonzalez in. the damage coming with two out a couple of doubles couple of singles and eighth batter of the inning Scott Van Slyke Mikey right-handed hitter has some pretty good power and boy did he do a nice job for the Dodgers last year off the bench hit for high average has some pop That's one thing, Mattingly had a very nice bench last year on their way to 94 wins. One and one now to Van Slyke. Corner outfielder, plays a little first. Son of Andy Van Slyke. Time Pirates, a pitch in the dirt. Second. Not in time, although Odor did just about everything he could to try and apply the tag between the legs while in the air. Trying to get Kendrick on the helmet. Now, he did knock the helmet off with something. I don't know, maybe his leg or something. But that was actually a little bit closer than it probably should have been. Very acrobatic play by Odor. You see, Corpin tries to throw it from his knees, throws that ball, tails up in the line, and I don't think Odor's left knee is uh, faring too well this inning. They've taken seen him go up and, ooh, that helmet to the knee. That's what knocked the helmet off. That doesn't feel very good. What well, does the forearm shiver that he took right around the belt area there? And who says baseball is not a contact sport? Good huh? man. A lot of it here in this third inning. All on one guy, unfortunately, yeah. for Odor. He's the smallest guy on the field. 2-2. Two -two. Yeah. And then Slyke puts a charge into this one. That will travel to the wall. Kendrick home. 
Van Slyke turns second. And he is out at third base. Just ran out of gas there at the end. Pretty close call at third, but that one ends the inning. Not before the Dodgers pick up five runs in the bottom of the third. Oh, boy. <laughs> no replay here during spring training. Thank goodness. We go to the fourth. Decided to limp in the dugout. Taking a look at that last play, that near triple. Now, here's why it was so close. You see Martin get the ball and throw it in, but he missed the first cutoff man, which is Odor. Fortunately, Elvis is there on the double cut as he should be, but that's why it's important to hit that first cutoff man. If you hit, it hit Odor, that play would not have been even close so it's important that you come up and know where your cutoff men are and hit that first leadoff man in the chest if possible we did get a favorable call on the play which advances this game to the fourth inning where elvis andrews leads it off and he's in a hole 0 and two brendan mccarthy got a nice long rest that last half inning Right-handers, two-strike offering, just missed the outside corner. Andrews, grounded out in the second. It's this one high in the air. Center field, and Heisey is there. Catcher number three, Carlos Rangers started the scoring with three in the top of the third. Tepish hadn't allowed a base runner until the bottom of the third. Got touched up for five runs on six hits. Now Carlos Corcoran and the curveball in there, strike one. Like a lot of catchers, not valued so much for his bat as much as his glove. And with that, sends this one into left field, a base hit. Yeah, most catchers are, that's what their value is. There are obviously some catchers throughout both leagues that swing the bat well, as well. But typically, especially that backup guy is a guy that's, defensive minded the number one priority for most catchers is hey I've got to be able to handle that pitching staff whether it's a starter or the reliever but that's my number one job and any offense that I can throw out there is just a plus well now Thomas Field hitting for Odor so he's done taking a 
couple of hits last inning. And when you say taking a couple of hits, <laughs> a couple of hits off the knee, that wasn't very good. Fields. This is one of the second. Kendrick grabs it and doubles up Corcoran to rapidly in the inning. No runs a hit. And nobody left. After three and a half today in Glendale, Dodgers five, Rangers three. Saturday, April 3rd and 4th. It's your first chance to see the Rangers back in Arlington before the season kicks off. Tickets for these games are just $5, $10, or $20 using the online code PRESEASON at TexasRangers.com. Get your seats today. Huh? Here we are in the booth here at... Uh, Glendale Camelback Ranch, and it's a nice, it's a nice facility, at least for us. I mean, this is comfy. Beautiful. Nice shade. All right. We're not down there baking like lobsters, <laughs> like most of the people are. But a lot of people that were, that were down below, they're up underneath the, uh, the island up here. Yeah, they're not fools. They, they move. And then there's those folks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they, see, they came with really one goal today and that was to get some sun I, I think they accomplished they, their goal they are, they are well on their way to getting more than they really want that's it <laughs> Ben back take some more in now here bottom of the fourth inning and Tepish back out there It'll be interesting to see how he responds after a tough third in which he threw 32 pitches this one lined up the middle, a base hit for Carl Crawford. They are barreling up some balls the second time through the order. In fact, the Dodgers, second time through the order now, are six for six. Crawford gets fastball over the middle part of the plate. Temp is trying to go away, didn't get it away far enough. And CC drills it right back up the middle for a single. So Crawford, who's always had great speed over there at first base. I don't know if it's a real running situation, but Tepish will check in on him. Absolutely. Whenever Carl Crawford's on base, it's a running they situation. Send it. Go. And you, go. are you a you an early in the count guy? Like, I mean, let's go. First pitch. Yeah, I, I loved running early in the count because I didn't want my the batter hitting behind me to put himself in a hole, taking a pitch or anything like that. So I wanted to get in scoring position as quickly as I possibly could for him. Now a bluff by Crawford. Britain in a hole 0 and 1. Think about Crawford that 
I don't know, I don't know why it's, it's so difficult for me to get through my head. 14 years of big league time, and I mean, it seems like yesterday that he was going to go to Nebraska as a quarterback and then stood up the Huskers, my home state, to play baseball. And I'm not over it I'm yet, not, it sounds I'm, like. 14 years isn't quite enough. It, it, I'm that's still exactly what it sounds like, trying to work yourself through it. Well, you, uh, you know, you're a bit of a college football guy, too. It's been a long, tough run for the Huskers. <laughs> All because of Carl Crawford. Yes! His fault. <laughs> Spurning the Cornhuskers. Just couldn't do it. They haven't had a chance to rebuild, rebound, anything. It's been tough. <laughs> it's been tough. <laughs> it's just, just one of those things. You know, he was he was going to be a big deal. I bet he would have been a heck of a deal. I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk to him about it let him know that. I wish we had Russell Wilson on again with us today. We could have asked him about it. <laughs> I mean, a terrific athlete, though, that much we know. And he is, you know, it's worked out for him, this whole pro baseball thing, I think. Not bad. Not bad. 14, year, 14 years later, not bad. Actually, but I think it was longer than that. He had a couple years in the minor leagues. Well, might, might, might have been a little bit longer than that. <laughs> Seems like yesterday. He's running this time. Pitches inside. Good throw by Corcoran. But not in time. Wow, that was a nifty rifle shot from Corcoran. Took this Cuts thing down off. a lot of time if you've got a strong enough arm, and Corcoran does. Gets a pitch, a tough pitch to handle, and gets it down there and throws a strike. Just not quite in time. Tepes just a little long getting to the plate. Actually, that ball bounced, and Corcoran picked it up on a backhand, fired it down to second base. Nice job. Crawford now out there at second base. And a two and two count on Buck Britton. Britton's the guy who kind of spoiled the afternoon for Tepish. He's the one who came up with the hit to start that five run third inning. Two Part of that. Two strike hit. Yeah. Tepish has been cruising at that point. One thing to get ahead of hitters, but you've got to be able to finish them off. Twenty-six-year-old right-hander Nick Tepish, trying to lock down one of those spots in the bullpen, and did he get Britain to go? No, apparently. Gabe Morales played umpire. Didn't need any help with that. That's a full count. A somewhat labored at bat on both ends. A lot of breakups between pitches. Could be the Tepish. Slowing down a little bit as he approaches 70 pitches on the afternoon. A couple of shakes, he and Corcoran finally agree, and the payoff fouled off. It's the seventh year of the Dodgers playing here at Camelback Ranch. Seven years, man. It's a long time. Time just flies. It doesn't. It just seems like a couple of years ago they opened this ballpark. I mean, it was news. I mean, it was a big deal that the Dodgers would leave Vero Beach. Puts a charge into this, carrying deep to right field, and a two-run shot. Seven to three, Dodgers. Again, two strikes, Mac. I mean, he's just having trouble finishing off these hitters. That's the big thing right there. Lost him seven runs here in his last two innings, not being able to get that last 
striker that last out on these Dodgers hitters. See a 3 2 pitch here, two going back. Ballpark not big enough to hold that one. Ellis, eighth place hitter. And a whole 0 and 1. First time through the order, the Dodgers went one for nine at the plate against Tapish. Ellis pops this one into right field. Chu right there. And that is the first out of the inning. And that is also the first time that Tepish has retired a Dodger. Second time through the order. Second time through the order now. They are seven for eight against him for the home run. And three doubles. Juan Mendez warming up in that bullpen. One of the better kept secrets in this ballpark. Try to disguise those guys in the bullpen. Can't see them. That is Mendez out there. One strike pitch. And McCarthy spoils that one. Oh, and to the count. <laughs> we know you're back there. Two strikes. Did not go. That's Barrett and Alan Porter, the base umpires today. They changed positions through the course of the afternoon during these spring training games. One, two. And that one right to second base. Thomas Field makes the play. And it's the second out of the inning. McCarthy lost his bat on the the swing, or did he snap it in half? I think that snapped in half. Wow. That's a bad piece of lumber. No longer. Oh, got it off the end. It's usually what happens to those when you hit it off the end. Misuse it and it'll break? <laughs> Pretty much. I, I did a lot of that. <laughs> Two gone, now base is empty for Jimmy Rollins. And Tepish pumps it right in there. Lines that over first and into right field. Two able to gather it up and hold him to a single, but a two-out single for Jimmy Rollins, his second hit of the day. Jimmy got to jump on that first pitch fastball that he saw from Tepish and drilled it in the right field. Thought Fielder was going to be able to get up and get it, but couldn't get up that high. Well, Jeff Bannister will relieve Tepish of his duties today. Ramon Mendez. Pops out from behind the curtain and is coming into the game. We'll tell you about Mendez and give you the rest of the fourth in just a moment.
run Dodgers lead as we continue playing the bottom of the fourth inning. Roman Mendez comes on in relief of Nick Tepish. Roman Mendez, this will be his seventh game. He's retired 21 of 27 batters with eight Ks from his first six spring appearances. His opponent's batting average is 164 for 25, so he's had a very, very good spring. We saw him yesterday in the eighth inning. Come on, after the lead man was put on base and got out of the inning with no harm done. So pitching on back-to-back -back days, and he fires one in for a strike to Chris Heisey. Jeff Bannister wants to see a lot of his relievers right now pitch on back-to-back -back days this time of spring training. See how they respond. Well, you know, that's what he's going to ask them to do throughout the course of the season. There are going to be days where you're going to have to go, you know, to certain guys on you know, two days in a row or two days out of three. And so you've got to see what they can do, how they react to that in spring training. A lot of the decisions have been made now by Bannister. Not too many issues to figure out at this point. He named his fifth starter today, so the rotation for Bannister will be Giovanni Gallardo on opening day. But you've got Derek Holland, Colby Lewis, Ross Detweiler, Nick Martinez in the rotation. He said that Holland will start the home opener. Gallardo getting the season opener in Oakland. Oh, two. And nothing there. So rotation's pretty well set. The outfield, the three outfield spots basically available. And Bannister's down to four guys in the running for those spots. Rua, Smolensky, the Shields, and Piguero. And Mendez, boy, just missed the outside corner. And then there was the acquisition yesterday, Sam Freeman, acquired from St. Louis yesterday for a player to be named later or cash considerations, a left-hander. And a left-hander for a bullpen right now without one. Heisey keeps the at-bat going. Now, it was interesting talking to Bannister today. I was looking up Freeman's numbers this morning. He's a lefty with reverse splits. Lefties seem to do better against him than do right-handers. But Bannister said that there, there are a couple mechanical things and changes they have seen him make. They think they might be able to tweak him just a little bit and have him be a little more effective against lefties. As Heisey goes down swinging to win the fourth inning. Roman Mendez. Nice job in relief on back-to-back -back days. He takes us to the fifth inning today in Glendale. Welcome to DallasTruckWorld.com. DallasTruckWorld.com is a place for you to buy.
Rangers baseball on TXA 21 is sponsored by Sport City Toyota. Surf the city and save at SportCityToyota.com. Beautiful, sunny afternoon in Glendale, Arizona. Dodgers working with a 7-3 lead and a lot of coaching happening right there. Steve Bouchelle. Jeff Bannister. Well, that's what spring training is all about. Although you see that plenty in the regular season as well, right? I mean, yeah, you see it all the time. Whenever something comes up, uh, they address it. Uh, whether it's spring training or during during the season, they may you know be looking at a different alignment or something like that. Uh, they may have seen something that Elvis didn't see, or or something. Elvis may have seen something that they didn't see. So there's a uh, coaching going on all the time. It's communication. So whether it's coming from a coach or whether it's coming from a, a player to a coach, you got to have that communication going. Two strike offering, and that's called strike three. A very short at bat for Leonis Martin. We are underway in the fifth inning. Two strikes on Martin. McCarthy comes inside with that fastball. It's Martin looking. Well, the veteran right-hander has looked pretty good today. Had a little hiccup there in the third inning. Has worked around some base runners today, but we've all gotten the job done. And that curveball that you just saw right there, especially early on, was very effective for him. Very effective. He's got that, that big one. It's a 11 to 5 curveball. Chu lifts it down the left field line. Long run down there for Crawford, but not enough room. It's a long strike. She seems to hit the ball the opposite way. Well, a lot. He can drive the ball to left field, but it just goes and goes and goes. Sometimes it looks like a pop-up. The ball will end up in the seats for a home run. Yeah, he's very similar to Adrian Gonzalez in that manner. Adrian Gonzalez can go the, go the opposite way with the best of them. Two. This one on the ground to the right side of the infield, handled by Gonzalez with McCarthy covering the bag, two away. That brings up Adrian Beltre. Beltre double his last time in. Drove in a run. Popped up. Back in the first. We're talking last inning. A uh, little bit about some of the position battles and how they're playing out for the Rangers. 2-0. Rotation set. That outfield is becoming clearer by the day. Only one more cut really needs to be made among the four men remaining. And there's the matter of the bullpen. 2-1 and one now to Beltre. They're trying to figure out who really would be the guy to get that difficult left-hander out late in the game. Sam Freeman, the lefty they acquired from the Cardinals yesterday, joins the mix. He's not yet in camp. I think he gets in later tonight or tomorrow. Something Alex, tells me he's going to pitch tomorrow. I would, as soon as he gets here. <laughs> if he got here this afternoon, he might just be bust right over here. Just might. And now Beltre turns away from the strike. It's three and two. But Alex Claudio, still a possibility. Fujikawa, the guy who may be, at least at this point, the guy they turn to to get a left-hander out. Well, right now, Fujikawa's getting everybody out. It doesn't okay. matter if they're left-handed, right-handed, switch hitter. He's getting you out. So 
you know, you'd like to have an effective left-hander. You'd like to have two effective left-handers coming out of the bullpen if you can. But if you don't have them and your and your right-handers are better than your left-handers, then that's what you go with. Payoff pitch and that one smoked down the left field line. Beltre from one knee. He'll turn first and coast into second base with a two-out double. I have absolutely no idea how he does that. <laughs> You know, and you can see it time and again, but it almost never makes sense, but it works. My goodness, it works. Hey, just look at this. Breaking ball, hanging inside, and he just drops to one knee. Look at this. Incredible. Now let me get up and run, get a double. I love it. I don't think anybody has more fun on a baseball field than... Adrian Beltre, day to day, and he's out there every single day. He is a lot of fun to watch. Ed Lucas replaces him on the bases, and Prince Fielder hits one hard to right, but Scott Van Syke is there to haul it in and end the inning. No runs, the two out double. The Rangers leaving as we head to the bottom of the fifth. Halfway there, Dodgers by four. Now, you know what they're sharing, right? Shade. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> they are sharing shade. That seems to be the going thing today. <laughs> Dodgers with the lead as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Ramon Mendez will come out again. See if he can throw a little more than one inning today. And he will deal with... Adrian Gonzalez to start things off. Right in there, strike one. And Dez in relief today as Gonzalez sat down to first. Gonzalez is there, under hands to first. Mendez covering one away. Gonzalez has just come into play this inning for Prince Fielder. Since you Chu is out of the game now, and Carlos Piguero is taken over in right field. There's Carlos, and new center fielder as well. Smolinski has come on. To replace Leonis Martin. Kendrick takes strike one. And then the last change this inning there is Ed Lucas at, at third. Oh, and two to Howie Kendrick. So already in the fifth inning, Mac and lineup is turning over.
Thomas Field had already been in the game at second base. As this one lined in the center by Kendrick. Another Dodgers hit in his second of the day. Field had to come in to play second base because Uved Odor left with a bruised left shin. We were told officially. Thomas Field. Gets that fastball up in the zone, and Kendrick drills it back up the middle for another base hit, his second one of the day. So now Scott Van Slyke. He felt like he had a triple in the third inning, but in fact, on a replay show, that was probably true. Yes, I think it was. <laughs> Instead was... Give it credit for the double and picked up the RBI, but that put an end to the third inning. Two strikes on him now. Really one of the ways, though, the Dodgers are an impressive team. The fact that they can bring guys like Van Slyke off the bench, who has a real good, very potent bat. Well, the fact that they were able to trade away Matt Kemp, one of the best outfielders in, in baseball, and still have a Scott Van Slyke and Andre Ethier and Yasiel Puig to run out there on a daily basis. It's a pretty stacked ball club still. And there, Carl Crawford. I mean, they... You know, it was last year where you felt like, geez, something wasn't quite right. You can't have all the good outfielders in the National League on one team. Now people sort of feel that way a little bit about the Padres. And I shifted the balance a little bit. And they're very deep in the outfield. This team, though, is still plenty deep. Of course, it was, what, two, maybe three years ago when the, when the Dodgers had, like, eight frontline starting pitchers at the start of the year and they're trying to just find a home for guys like Aaron Harang who's way down on their depth chart all he does is pitch 200 innings a year An embarrassment of riches yeah the new ownership group in Los Angeles the Guggenheim folks Magic Johnson they have certainly provided a lot of stability and a lot of hope to Dodgers fans going forward. Previous group, it, well, things have gotten a little ugly there in Los Angeles. Runner going, and it's like pops this one up in a shallow right field. Field heading out there, and that was beyond his reach. Might still have a chance at second, but he can't pick up the baseball. Goes down as a single for Van Slyke. Ali Kendrick was the man who may have turned in a great performance there by getting back to first and then having to turn it back around again to get to second. Well, he started off, he broke on the steal, then went back to first. Field can't make the play. Kind of kicks it out further in right field, and then how he had to turn around and get back to second base. Just kind of short-armed it there and then kicked off of his chin. Heads up, base running by Kendrick. And that's a difficult play for Thomas Field. Here's Carl Crawford. It looked like Field might have been breaking in over to the bag to cover. And yeah. then that pop-up had him changing direction. I mean, everybody was changing directions. Yeah, that's exactly what he was doing. He's going to cover the base because you have the base runner at first base, Van Slyke stealing second. Or, I'm sorry, Kendrick going to break into second. So he left his natural position or it would have been a much easier play for him. But he was there in time. He just looked like he kind of short-armed it a little bit. Mendez, who got the first hit of the inning, has now given a back-to-back -back singles. Right-hander 
Fires, low and away. Let's watch Field again on that play. See him break into the bag. He takes a couple steps over. Then he realizes, hey, that's probably going to be closer to me. So he breaks out there to, to go get it. Now, one of the things that I didn't notice before, he's actually looking toward the sun. So he might have lost it in the sun just a little bit. Not an easy play. Two balls, two strikes now on Crawford, who singled and scored his last time up. Rolled out in the second inning. One for two today. Mendez came in to get the final out of the fourth inning. Could use a ground ball right here. That's a full count. Yesterday, when Mendez came in a relief, he inherited a base runner. Today, inherited one as well. Both times stranded him. Runner going, and that one fouled off by Crawford. And, you know, to some degree, that that's a type of thing that can become a, I don't know, a calling card for certain relievers, right? They might not be late-inning guys, but they might be those guys that you, you know, you lean on. you, you got to leave a runner or two out there. Sometimes have that ability to come in midway through an inning, and some guys seem seemingly need to come in clean for an inning. Yeah, typically it's that closer that likes to come in clean. But, you know, in my opinion, when you're, when you're in the bullpen, you've got to come in in whatever situation and just put out the fire. That's why you're coming in in the first place. So whatever it is, whether it's in the middle of an inning uh, where the team's scoring four or five runs or you're starting off an inning, you just got to come in and shut things down. Kendrick at second, Van Slyke at first. 3-2. Hit the center field. Playable, however. Smolenski calls it in. Two away. Kendrick moved up to third on the play, and here comes Jeff Bannister. That may be it for Mendez. He's done all that Bannister wants or needs him to do today. And so we'll go to that Rangers bullpen again here with the fifth inning. Men on the corners for the Dodgers. They lead by four. Dodgers bats have been rolling this afternoon here at Glendale at Camelback Ranch. 
And as such, we now see our third pitcher of the afternoon, Cody E.G. E.G. got into 37 ball games in Myrtle Beach last year. A 4 1 record, ERA 388. 62 hits and 17 walks. So he's a fastball slider sinker guy on the left side. Kind of drops down almost sidearm. So he can be, looks like he can be pretty tough on left handers. Well, he's probably bumming out right now. 15th round pick out of Louisville. They just lost in overtime to Michigan State. In the NCAA basketball tournament. It's the Big Ten now with a couple of teams in the Final Four. I'm not quite sure that he's bummed out pitching in an A game. So, let me take that back. He's feeling pretty good. Yes. Despite the fact that his alma mater lost in overtime. There you go. <laughs> That's about right. <laughs> here's, here's his 1-0 to Buck Britton. And it's 2-0. That's a good point. Two years in the minor leagues for EG. Spokane, Hickory, and Myrtle Beach two summers ago. Last year, the whole summer in Myrtle Beach. And he finds inside corner for a strike. 23 years old, and as you point out, pitching in an A game. That is kind of cool. Is very cool. I don't think he woke up this morning realizing or thinking, hey, I'm going to pitch an A game against the Dodgers. Tommy Lasorda and Don Manningly are going to be watching from the visiting dugout. My own manager is going to be just feet away from me, telling me something. It was a great opportunity for those kids. I know they love it. They're, you know. They're somewhat in awe, but they know they still have a job to go out there and do and get done. But it's something they'll never forget. Well, Lefty's got kind of a not quite a sidearm delivery, maybe lower three quarters. It's a good angle on left handed hitters like Buck Britton. He was a big time high school star in Iowa. He went to Washington High School in Cherokee, Iowa. Two, two. And that's right in there for strike three called. Well, there you go, Cody E.G. Way to go. Picking up those Louisville Cardinals today with a Nice will lead performance. We go to the six, seven to three Dodgers. The Volkswagen Jetta. Texas Rangers 10 game plans are still on sale through the end of March. Choose from six available plans and save up to 17% off gate prices. Best of all, you'll get opening day free. Visit TexasRangers.com slash 
10 game plans for details and to purchase. But hurry, your last day to purchase is today. So you got to do it now. Well, you got a couple hours anyway. But get on it. To the sixth inning. Still taking in some sun out on the grass. Brandon McCarthy still pitching for the Dodgers. And he has done a pretty good job today. As they wait. There we go. Come on, get that closed. Everybody, everybody go to your, your spots. Beltre went in to see Tommy Lasorda. Oh, they go way back. Way back to when Beltre first came into the organization. This was his first organization, the Dodgers. A 19 year old, so or actually even before that. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, he, <laughs> they signed him as a 16 year old right, and right. eventually had to, had to make good on that. They were fined by Major League Baseball and whatnot. But yeah, you're right. I mean, they do go way back. And anybody who spent any appreciable time in the Dodgers organization thusly has a relationship with Tommy Lasorda oh there's no question he's not just he's not just a, a Dodgers guy he's a, a baseball ambassador everybody knows Tommy and Tommy knows everybody <laughs> mm -hmm. Ryan Rua takes it off the plate two balls two strikes Rua today one for two had an infield hit that got a run home in the third inning. Is also grounded out to third. And he strikes out, swinging to start the sixth inning. Yeah. McCarthy seems though he's got it going now. Had a little shaky start in the first first inning or so, but he's been pretty much lights out ever since. Using that high fastball, using that big breaking ball he's got. Three strikeouts for him today. A lot of ground ball outs, including a he did get a double play in the fourth inning. And he starts Moreland off with strike one. So although that double play in the fourth inning came on a line out. But we talked about it at the outset. One of the things he tries to do is get the ball hit on the ground. And he has done a good job of that today. As Moreland takes another strike of the count 0 and 2. Thirty one years old, fairly outspoken McCarthy. And he gets Moreland to pop this one foul and out of play. It was a couple years ago when he was struck on the head by a line drive and had to miss quite a bit of time. And he has taken the opportunity to speak out a little bit about you know the safety of pitchers, the idea of wa maybe wearing padded caps. <laughs> Moreland keeps the at bat going. And yet that looks like a traditional lid to me, right? I mean, that's there's nothing. It's hard to tell. Maybe is that one fouled off by Moreland? You know, I'm not quite sure if they've been approved yet or not. Okay. So if that's the case, that might not. Uh, that might be what it is. It doesn't look like it is. I see the wrinkle on the side there. The 0 2. And he gets Moreland swinging. So back to back strikeouts in the sixth inning. You know, that can't be an easy thing for a pitcher to come back from. You take a line drive back up the middle and it hits you and knocks you out for, you know, two or three months. It cannot be easy to get back up there on that hill. Got to imagine that very first time he got one shot back up the box at him again. Might have rattled him a little bit, but. I mean, you got to give it to him. He's back out there, and he's throwing well. He's gotten better, actually, since mm -hmm. then. That jumps ahead of Elvis Andrews here, 0-1. Oh, and one. And one out away from completing six innings today in a spring effort. And that curveball just misses inside.
two balls and a strike to Andrews. Rangers got their three runs in the third inning, but gave five back in the bottom of the third, and then two more in the fourth. The Dodgers' bats came alive. And now Andrews squares the count of two and two with that foul ball. It was a kind of a curious little note today in the Dodgers' notes, pointing out that in the three previous games these teams have played this year, the Dodgers have scored 11 runs in each of them. Well, that, well, that trend can't continue. Andrews, this one hard to left field, and that one up over the head of Crawford, and up against the wall. Andrews trying for third, and he'll get in there sliding with a two-out triple. Elvis drilled this ball in the left center field. Actually, over the left fielder, Carl Crawford's head. Carl thought he had a beat on it. That ball just kept carrying. Gets a fastball down the middle of the plate. Elvis gets some good wood on it. Drives it. Crawford going back. Thought he might have had it, but ball bounced up over the wall. And Elvis taking off right from the box. easy triple and that's the one that knocks McCarthy out of the game couldn't quite get his full six innings in today as Andrews triples off him and McCarthy has a word as he leaves the field well Peralta a right-hander coming on for the Dodgers we'll tell you about him in just a moment Well, welcome back again, Camelback Ranch. Brandon McCarthy, done for the day today. Five and two-thirds innings, struck out four, did a nice job. Joel Peralta in on a double switch. And the right-hander will take over with two away in the sixth inning. Peralta, this will be his sixth game today, or this, this spring. Came over from the Rays. He had 69 appearances last year. This is a veteran reliever. He's been around 10, 11 years now. He's a rubber-armed right-hander. Last four seasons, nobody in Major League Baseball has appeared in more games as a pitcher. It's this ball chopped to second. Nice Sunday hop to Kyle Kendrick, and that ends the inning. No runs, a two-out triple, but the Rangers lead him at third. We go to the last of the sixth inning with the Dodgers leading by four.
four run Dodgers lead as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. And a couple of moves in this bottom of the sixth for the Rangers. Elliot Johnson is coming to play second base. Thomas Field shifts over to shortstop. And Keone Kella has come on to pitch. He has been pretty impressive this spring. He's been very impressive. Got retired 21 out of 24. Batters he's faced with eight Ks in seven appearances so far this spring. Jeff Bannister really, really wants to see what this kid can do on back to back days. And as we get ready to begin play here in the bottom of the sixth inning, we welcome in Elvis Andrews. Elvis, thanks for uh, taking a little time with us here. Nice job. That lasted bat. Thank Triple. you, guys. Thank you. Had that one all the way, right? It feels good, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I have pretty good uh, at bats today. That's what you want. It's been training. You know, work on a, he threw me a lot of breaking pitch, off pitch, and, uh, you know, it was a pretty good at bat, especially the last one I was able to, you know, catch that sinker on front. Now, Elvis, this time of spring, you got, you know, maybe a week to go or five or six games left to go. What is it that you're really focusing on and concentrating on at this point? Uh, it's the pain. Like, today I was trying to work on um, getting an account, you know, see as many pitch I can. I've been trying to work a uh, different thing, a different aspect of the game every single day. And, you know, a couple games uh, I've been trying to be aggressive early. Uh, today was for me more to work the count and, and you know, see how I feel in that two-strike approach. And, you know, I think that I feel really well. I was going to say, if, uh, enough already? Are you, you ready to just go ahead and play the games for real? Oh, my God. I've been, I've been ready <laughs> since like two weeks ago. And I feel good right now. I think that right now just uh, getting my, my, my legs and, you know, those uh, stealing uh, jumps and everything ready to go. But, you know, defensively-wise and offensively-wise, uh, I think I'm, you know, I feel really, really well and I'm ready to go. You know, how do you think the team is shaping up now? Are you liking hitting down in the order or does it really matter to you where you are in the order? No, I mean, you know, talk to him already early. I say, if I'm not hitting second, you know, I'd rather hit uh, down in the light now. But, and, uh, you know, wherever he needs me, uh, I'll be good to go. I don't really, you know, thinking too much this year when I'm going to hit or not. I just want to, you know, start the year and, and, and go out there and jump and do my job. That's, you know, that's my mentality this year. No matter what I hit, uh, just to go out there and play hard every day. You know, speaking of mentality, Elvis, you know, we've talked about it a little bit during these broadcasts, but always interested to get the opinions of, those of you who have been around here for a while, you know, the Ron Washington era is a thing of the past now. This is the Jeff Bannister era. It is a different environment. How is it for you guys down there? How has the transition been? Uh, what, what do you think overall? Uh, it's been amazing. I think the, you know, uh, agents doing a tremendous job uh, leading the team, uh, keeping everybody uh, loose and, and, and relaxed. So, I mean, the, you know, I think the clubhouse is a lot better this year. Uh, the chemistry, you know, as a team is, you know, it's ten time better than this year. I think that a lot of new guys and a lot of guys that just came uh, in last year, like Chu and, and Prince, they feel a lot comfortable. And, you know, the rest of the guys, they just kind of like have, a, you know, a couple couple of bats, you know, under their belt. And, you know, that little experience, you know, you can see it in their in their face and the way they handle themselves in the clubhouse. Well, that sounds good to me. Sounds like things have gone pretty well. I'm glad to hear that you're ready to go. Let's. I'm with you. Let's just yeah. start the games. We all we all ready to go. Believe <laughs> me, it's gonna be a tremendous year. You know, hopefully we can stay healthy. I think that that's the main key for every team in the league. And you know, if we can stay healthy, I think we're gonna compete and and, and be there. You know, against any team. All right, we'll get out of the sun and, and go enjoy <laughs> some rest. Thanks, Elvis. We right, appreciate man. it. Thank you, guys. See you. All right, Elvis Andrews, telling us, among other things, he you know. He's ready to go. There's a hard smash to short field. The second for one in the relay by Elliot Johnson. Not in time. Mayhart showing some pretty good speed beating that one out. That ball, that ball was... That was a rocket he hit yeah. short, a one hopper. And he still beat it out. Well, the kick and run. Actually, he doesn't run, he flies. I mean, I, that's why I wish, you know, we kept, you know, a stop clock on these guys going from home to first, because that was, that was rapid. Hey, Hart, who came in defensively last inning and in left field. Now we'll see what kind of a threat he is on the bases. And a pinch hitter up there now, Dylan Moyer. 
for the Dodgers as we begin to get into that long list of minor league additions to today's roster for them. When we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, this is a split squad day for the Dodgers. And they have a lot of their regulars just down the road in Scottsdale to play the Giants. And so that means we get deep into the organization on days like today. Kella trying to freeze Ahart over there at first. And then rushes it right past Dillon for a swinging strike to count 0 and 2. Well, he just blew that by him. Corcoran wants it outside. Comes over the heart of the plate for his strike, however. And that's it for Dylan Moyer, two away. Well, sometimes you don't hit your spots and it works out for you. Outside, outside. You see Kelly throw a fastball right down the middle of the plate, try to hit it, hit it outside. When you're throwing mid to upper 90s. You can sometimes miss and get away with it. And see, it has been a great spring for Kella. It has. He's done a tremendous job. This is seventh ball, eighth ball game. And really just hasn't given up anything. And that's what you like to see. This is the second day in a row pitching. And Manny really wants to see a lot of these guys go back to back days and try and set things up, you know, if they make the roster. This is what they're going to be counted on to do during the season. Pitch, you know, two days in a row, sometimes two out of three, sometimes three out of four. Swing and strike on Heisey, the count on one. I don't want to get out of my lane, but 21 years old, can we call him? Babyface Keller? <laughs> I tried to hold that. I really tried to hold that. I did. I don't want to encourage you. Okay. But, uh, right. We'll put that. We'll put that one away for a while. Then. Let's do. Let's do that. <laughs> See, there are these things, these cultural references that I hear. Like last inning, what was it? Howie Kendrick, you know, fielded the ground ball to end the inning, and I called him Kyle Kendrick. <laughs> you did. Now I couldn't tell you what car. Kyle Kendrick drives for a race car. <laughs> well, I know it's fast. Uh, you know, just little things slip in there every now and then. Yes, that that one, yes, yes, they do. And some of them shouldn't. And we'll put this is true with Kyle well. Kendrick along with Babyface Keller on the list. No, I think those are two totally separate <laughs> things. Yeah, the Kyle Kendrick. I can you get keep that. It separate. Yeah, we'll keep it separate. The the Babyface Keller, <laughs> not so good. <laughs> You, you, you do have to try every now and then. Heisey down swinging to end the inning. So Kella, sharp again, works around that leadoff walk and puts up a zero as we go to the seventh inning at Camelback Ranch. Welcome to Dallas.
Dodgers as we go to the seventh inning. The, uh, Rangers four deep so far into the pitching staff today and the, the Dodgers have started to empty the bench a little bit new outfield and for the most part a new infield as well and here we go Thomas Field to start things off Peralta in the last inning and will continue to pitch Peralta got the final out of the sixth Four's in a strike. Which in the last inning at, in the last four years has appeared in more games than any other pitcher in Major League Baseball. Is breaking ball in there for a strike. Almost 200 and almost 270 games, I think, for Peralta. Wow. That's called effectiveness. You don't get called upon that often. Well, take that back. Unless Two, you're getting out. 296. Oh, you short cutting. I did. 296 appearances in four years. So, at spring training, I wonder if you're Don Mattingly and Rick Honeycutt, do you, do you say, we need to see him on back to back days or anything like that? Or you just say, I think he's probably ready. I, well, I, you know, with a guy like this that, that gets that many appearances, he's not going out there and throwing, you know, three or four innings at a time. You know, he may be a situational guy, come in and get a couple of guys out to finish off an inning. But that's about it. He's not going to go out there and go three or four innings. So right now, this is his second inning. Came on to finish that last one off, but he's just going out there trying to get his pitch count, make sure his arm strength is there, and his, uh, you know, get his, basically get his work in. Well, those guys are... Pretty valuable, those guys that you can count on over and over and over again. Peralta, three years with the Royals. He's pitched with the Nationals and the Rockies. And the 2-2, two -two, that one hit well left field. Ahart going back with room, and that one off the top of the wall. Field will hold it second with a leadoff double. Nice ride by Tommy Field. Got a fastball up in the zone. Out over the plate and cranks this one. Ball keeps going and going. Off the top of the wall. Right. AR just kind of whipped this a little bit, right? I mean, well, he, hit him on the. It, it, it's a tough sun. He's look, yeah, he's looking into the sun. Unfortunately, he had his glasses on top of his hat. I don't really understand that when you're playing a day game. I don't understand why you see a lot of guys with glasses on their hat and not on their eyes. But we'll take it. Thank you. You suppose he knows you're there? Somebody maybe ought to just doesn't tell look him. like it because he had not put them on <laughs> yet. It's a game of adjustments, right? I mean, you know, let's go. Let's make the adjustment. Put them on. No, not yet. Put him on tomorrow. <laughs> Here's Smolenski. And he pounds one in the dirt. High hop short. Moyer is there to make the play. Or out number one. Field moves over to third base. And you're telling me that Dylan Moyer, who just made that play at shortstop, that's Jamie Moyer's son. That is. That is. Dylan used to run around the clubhouse. For years in Seattle, and I'm sure in Philadelphia as well. Jamie pitched until he was about 75. <laughs> <laughs> yep. No, but yeah, he's a good kid. Good to see him out there getting that opportunity. Carlos Piguero, and he takes ball one from Peralta. Yeah, it's always always cool to see those legacy players. It really is. The 
Cordero rolls one down to first base. Bellinger is there. Goes to the bag himself. Two away. But field able to race in from third base. So a run in. And makes it a 7-4 to four game. Yeah, the job done. Drive that runner in. Any way you can. You know, with Jamie Moore pitching as long as he did, and he, he, he certainly, certainly did get everything he could out of that left arm. Uh, I mean, you, you know, you're getting pretty close there to overlapping, kind of like the Griffies did back in the day. Because Dylan's not that far off. No, not that far off. I think Jamie might have retired maybe three years ago, maybe three or four yeah, years I ago. I guess. He played, yeah. he pitched for over 20 years. So he did a tremendous job. He definitely got everything he, he could get mm. out of that left arm. There's Ed Lucas now, one and one to count to him. Pinch ran in the fifth inning. And then stayed in the game at third. Peralta trying to finish off a full inning after getting the final out of the sixth. And he may have just done it. A pop up to Moyer, the shortstop. Makes the play. Heading over, but the Rangers get one back. They climbed within three as they stand and stretch here at Camelback Ranch. Dodgers and uh, you know text your friends let them know games on TV you could even be on TV if you look up from your phone seven to four Dodgers and as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning see Phil Klein has come in he is the fifth pitcher today for the Rangers Phil Klein with a seventh outing trying to bounce back get up a three-run walk-off home run against Oakland Mark Kana into the ball game Friday, so he's trying to bounce back and so that he can get guys out and not give up that three-run ball. Keone Kella pitched another scoreless inning, one walk, two strikeouts ahead of Klein. Ramon Mendez went a scoreless inning today with a strikeout. Cody Edgy struck out the only man he faced. And Tepish today it was a brief but significant hiccup in the third inning. Going to give up five runs and then two more in the fourth. That has been it today. Now Phil Klein. Cody Ballinger playing a little first base this afternoon. Minor leaguer in the Dodgers system. And he takes a breaking ball for a strike. 
We mentioned earlier, this is the seventh year of Dodgers spring training in Arizona, in Glendale. After 61 years at Vero Beach in Florida. And that boy, I tell you what, more than maybe any other spring training location, Vero Beach was the one that was most, I don't know, uh, widely understood to be one team's location. Everybody knew about the Dodgers and Vero Beach. When you mentioned Vero Beach, it was Dodgers. Yeah. That was it. I mean, they're synonymous. There's not any other team, not even the Yankees in Fort Lauderdale or any any other team that I can really think of. That has that. Center field, and that one carries well over the head of Smolensky. Ballinger going to go for three, and he'll be in there. Bellinger gets a fastball out over the middle of the plate. It's a nice hack on it. He drives this ball over Smolensky's head and straight away center field. One hops the wall out in center. Turns that into a triple. Or well, anyone who, who is of the belief that the triple is the most exciting play in baseball would have enjoyed today's game. We've had a couple of them, and one that was called out, which was a, a missed call. Infield in now. And you're up. His first at bat of the day. And he went around. Danielle Mayora. Almost exclusively minor leaguers now in this game for the Dodgers. Klein gets him to foul this one back. Oh, and to the count. Yeah, Vero Beach, that was a... I don't know, that was a, a move that sort of reverberated throughout baseball when the Dodgers said, we're leaving. More Florida spring training for us. A rifle shot up in the seats. Look out. You know, I don't think anybody ever would have thought the Dodgers would leave Euro. Mm -mm. It just never dawned on anybody. When I first heard about it, I was shocked. One of those that made some sense. I mean, the, the Dodgers originally, you know, originally went to Vero. And they were a, an East Coast team. Right. And so... It made sense. All those New Yorkers would head down. A little tapper to second base. Not going to get the run home. Nicely played by Elliot Johnson. One away. But, you know, they move out to the West Coast and eventually it did make sense. More Dodgers fans can more easily make this journey to see their team. Spring training is one of those things, you know, the spring training sites that has evolved over the years. You know, for almost every organization. There was a time when teams just did spring training in their town. Oh, the Boston Red Sox just do spring training in Boston. That would not have gone well this year. That was a long time ago, wasn't it? No, it was a very long time ago. But you know, late 1800s, early 1900s, we started going down to Texas. That's probably where you started. Out of the left field and that one drops in. Base hit for Carson and it chases Bellinger home for the eighth Dodgers run of the day. Where was your first spring training? My first spring training was actually here in the Valley in Mesa. I was with the Angels and we would have spring training the first two weeks in Mesa. We played on the road. We didn't have a stadium, we just had practice fields. So the first two weeks of spring training, we played games all on the road. And then for the second half of spring training, we move our base to Palm Springs. Oh, man. Hated it. That's a, that is a really <laughs> bizarre arrangement. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. So teams would come to us, and, you know, we'd play a three- or four-game set. But it was it was a lot of fun. Webster Rivas, the hitter here, the minor league catcher. We had 
I mean, we're 90 minutes from Anaheim at the time, mm -hmm. you know, being in Palm Springs. So a lot of our fans were able to come over, and it was it, it was a great time. We got a lot of work in, had practice fields there, and you know. But by the time we got there, you know, the roster was pretty much whittled down to, you know, maybe 35, 40 guys. Two strike pitch, and Rivas shoots it foul. Yeah, but those previous two weeks in the Valley, when you really have no home per se. That couldn't have been a, a lot of fun. It really wasn't that bad. I mean, you just had a two-week road trip. Come back, and you've got a two-week homestand. So it really wasn't that bad. Two-week road trip. Now, if that had been in Florida, that would be a different story. I mean, you know, all the teams here were a lot closer. There was mm -hmm. nothing out here in Glendale or Surprise or even Peoria, so everybody uh, was actually even more condensed. So it was, you know, Scottsdale, Chandler, Tempe, so it, the teams were, were a lot closer then, and there weren't as many teams back then as there are now. Rivas strikes out, two away. And now Buck Britton. Fine, doing a nice job so far. What was the most exotic place that you would have played during spring training? Palm Springs. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was definitely a unique town. Definitely, uh, definitely unique. Rangers, when I was with the Rangers, we had spring training in Port Charlotte. That was kind of the opposite end. <laughs> <laughs> Strike to Britain. Big day today for Britain. Real nice day at the plate. Down the right field line. That'll be extra bases again. Parson into third. They'll send him to the plate. And it's a double for Buck Britton, who is now a triple away from the cycle in a spring game. in his spots there wanted to go away with that one that one came in a little bit Britain slams another one another hard hit ball drills it to the right field fence or an RBI double now AJ Ellis he takes strike one nine runs on 14 hits for the Dodgers I really I thought it would be next to impossible for them to go four consecutive games with 11 runs against the Rangers this spring, but it's reachable. I'm going to go out there on a limb and say they're not going to get it. Okay. I'll lock it down. Now they're one swing away from getting it right now. <laughs> so you're, I mean, you're out there a little bit. I like it. You're out there further than me <laughs> with that one. And he turns Ellis off the plate. Yeah, we, have, we might both be out of line on this one. Don't we? <laughs> no, they're not getting it. They're done. Trying to make this get, make this pitch here and get this last out. Get out of this inning. Oh, he's retired every other hitter. Hmm, look pretty good. But it's three and one. Two runs in in the inning. And there you see Britton walking off second base. And that's ball four to Ellis. I think the first thing I mentioned out back in the day, teams would just get ready for the season wherever their town was. You know, Detroit, you just start working out in Detroit a week before the season. So I don't think they had real elaborate spring trainings back in those days. The first team to leave their town and you know, maybe extend that spring training idea a little bit, the Giants, back, way back then. John McGraw moving to Texas. That's where the 
fact, a lot of spring training took place way back in the day. So did you go to those? <laughs> I did games? not. I did not. <laughs> the history of spring training did not know that. There's there's a lot of interesting history to spring training. Some of your days in Palm Springs, notwithstanding. Britain at second. Ellis at first. Klein trying to get through this seventh inning. Now, this is the, the kid, Devin Ahart, we saw in the sixth inning. It looked like he hit into a sure double play. I mean, a hard one hopper to short. And he just legged it out. He was very quick. And he takes a strike to count 0 and 2. I'm glad we actually got, had the replay on it because I, you know, if I had known any better, he, I would have thought he started 45 feet down the line. <laughs> Klein's 0 2. And no appeal, did not go. A leadoff triple, a one out single. Two outs, Britain doubled. And Ellis just walked. Yeah. In on a a little bit, but it drops in. He'll go. I don't think a wide turn and come back. A run in, though. Britain scores from second. And it's 10 to 4, Dodgers. Hart gets a fastball inside. It's a pretty good pitch, but he was able to pull those hands in. And drop this ball into right field for a single. That brings up Dylan Moyer. And Klein having a tough time finding that strike zone. 16 hits today for the Dodgers. One ties him up. One and one the count. jumps ahead one and two did you ever play you know, a lot of a lot of teams at the end of spring training or sometimes in the middle of spring training will make a trip overseas and baseball especially in the last 10 years or so has done a great job of trying to spread baseball around the world so breaking balls swung on and missed by Moyer ends the inning are you always stateside always stateside didn't have that opportunity Really, Palm Springs was it for you. That was it. Three runs in the seventh for the Dodgers. They lead handily as we go to the eighth.
On Sunday, April 12th, the Rangers will play their third home game of the season against the Houston Astros. And the first 15,000 fans in attendance will also get a Red Rangers cap, courtesy of AT&T. Come out to Globe Life Park for opening week. And to get your cap, purchase tickets today at TexasRangers.com. Well, we go to the eighth inning. And a new battery for the Dodgers. J.P. Howell to pitch. And Chris O'Brien is his catcher. Adam Rosales takes a strike. Count one and one. This is J.P. Howell's seventh game of the spring. Gone three consecutive outings of scoreless baseball, so he's been doing a good good job here so far. This week. How can you can your position. He does it nicely to get Rosales. Round number one. Fielding your position. Falling that way. Ball went right into his glove. Yeah, that play a lot harder maybe for a right-handed pitcher. That was hit right glove side for Howell. Yeah, it's a little bit tougher play for a right-hander. The right-hander may not even make that play. Well, probably it would typically end up as the shortstop trying to make that play. Rua one for three today. An infield hit. He came back in the third inning. Left tender Howell wastes no time. And that's breaking ball off the plate. It's one and one. This will be the 10th major league season for Howell. His third with the Dodgers. And again with that backdoor breaking ball. His career is turned very much for the positive since becoming a Dodger. Put up very good numbers in L.A. as a high, slow bounder to third. Picked up by Britain and fired across the diamond in time to get Rua. And here comes Mitch Moreland. You know, always on the lookout for those interesting spring training stories from you, Mac, and... and <laughs> Uh -oh. did, we, did we learn in the break that Palm Springs at, at home of yours for the, your first <laughs> spring training didn't exactly have an outfield fence? Something like that. Well, sort of. It, it, Playing it, a cow pasture out there? <laughs> pretty, it was a green cow pasture, but yes, <laughs> sort of. We had a rope out there in the outfield, so an outfielder had to be very careful. So there were a lot of balls that went underneath the rope. <laughs> and then what? <laughs> is, it, is, is that a ground rule double? Pretty much. Pretty much. 1-0 to Moreland. Big bender sweeps in there for a strike. They eventually got a fence out there around the, around, around the game field, so it was a nice place to play. And it didn't feel didn't feel that weird that, that there was no outfield wall or fence of any kind? No, because I played second, so it didn't, didn't matter, <laughs> matter to you. <laughs> and I wasn't hitting anything out there anyway. I would think that'd be a weird sensation, though. Although, again, you know, we just talk about the maturity of the game, right? The evolution of spring training and these things. We're playing these gorgeous facilities now. Uh, it, it's different than it was then. You just needed a place to get your work in, as we like to say. It was very different. Very different. What kind of crowds did you get in Palm Springs? Sold out pretty much every day. Is that right? Our first week there was usually spring, uh, spring break. Oh, goodness. So we were, yeah, we were sold out. And, you know, 90, being 90 minutes from L.A. or Anaheim, you know, a lot of fans would come over and watch ball, watch ball games. 2-2. Two -two. Moreland swings and launches this one right field. Carson's going to run out of room. That's gone. Solo shot for Moreland. 10-5 game. Mitch swinging the bat well. 
Mitch can be a very big piece to this Rangers offense. I know, you know, with, with Chu being back healthy, with Prince being back healthy, I think Mitch kind of gets lost in that in that conversation and in that shuffle a little bit. But he can. This is a guy that can hit 15 to 20 home runs and drive in 70 to 80 runs in this lineup, hitting in that sixth slot. And he's no slouch. Last year he kind of, you know, had a, had some injuries, obviously that, you know, kind of limited him to to games and lost a little bit of his power because of the uh, ankle problem that he had. But he's back, healthy, feeling good now. Gets this uh, pitch middle in from a left-hander. Takes him out over the bullpen and right. Team high third home run of the spring for Moreland. And they count one and one on Elliot Johnson. Save, and he throws it down the right field line. Johnson will stop at second base. Imagine a hit and an error charged to J.P. Howell. And then that's the, the very next question is, did that hurt? Did I get you in some place we should be concerned about? He says he's fine. May not hurt now, but it's probably going to hurt later. Oh, it looks like he got the bottom of his foot. Right, right in the spikes or something. So that's a, that's good news for them. I don't ever want to see a guy get hurt on something like that. That ball's coming back so fast. He really didn't have an opportunity to react to it. And the sound was sort of alarming initially, too, right? You can hear it strike. And that's your initial concern is, did that get bone or something? But... Did look like maybe the bottom of his foot, so that's that's a break. Thomas Corcoran now at the plate, and he's going the whole way today. Now he's falling behind, two and zero now. How the third pitcher today, Brandon McCarthy. Went five and two thirds for the Dodgers. Did real well. Struck out four, allowed three runs on seven hits. Joel Peralta gave up a run on a hit in an inning and a third. And now Howell. That was terrific last year and more of that setup role for the Dodgers. Left handers 2 1. And it's twice now that he's got Corcoran lunging after a pitch. So Peralta earlier, who's used a lot, well. Powell as well, 68 times out of the pen last year, 67 times out of the pen in 2013. And a bender called strike three as he gets Corcoran looking to win the top of the eighth. But the Rangers get one back, a solo home run by Mitch Moreland. Takes us to the bottom of the eighth inning. Dodgers doubling up the Rangers 10-5. to five. Welcome to Dallas.
Well, welcome back. Camelback Ranch in Glendale, Arizona. And here in the heart of the Sonoran Desert. A warm one today. Temperatures in the low 90s when we started several hours ago. Dodgers have had it their way today. Put up some big offensive numbers. And as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning, a couple of changes. A new left fielder for the Rangers. That's Alex Berg. And a new pitcher. And uh, Mac, Mac promised he would tell us all about Kosuke Tomita, who last year pitched in one game in the minor leagues in Japan for Yokohama. What did you see last year out of him, Mac? I really didn't see a whole lot out of him last year. Just being honest. All right. Okay. Pitched in one game. One game, but he, we're, we're going to find out exactly what, what this young got, man has yeah. right now. I think we're about to. He, he, he did get two outs, but he gave up a couple of runs on one hit. He walked one. And that was the, the extent. Well, that was in 2013. And that was in the Central League. Now, last year was 0-2 with four saves and a 3.27 ERA in the Japanese minor leagues. Okay, so there, that's a little more data. And it starts Peter Lavin with a fastball upstairs for ball one. And behind 2-0. and oh. So both teams getting deep into their rosters today. Now, when you play in front of a small crowd, Mac, you, you can start hearing individual voices a little more yes. clearly, right? There were some there were some cities, unfortunately, in the big leagues that you could that you had small crowds and you could hear certain hecklers having a blast. Tampa was one of them before they started winning. Milwaukee was one when they were back in the American League. There's a pop up in the left field. Berg is there and one away. So really, I mean, the, kind of easier to drown everything out in those big stadiums, packed houses. It can be a little easier, but if you've got some people right, you know, uh -huh. around the batter's box area, like in Boston, they're right there. In New York, Chicago, they're right there. It can get pretty ugly. <laughs> <laughs> it can get pretty ugly. And, he, and a lot of those places, too, in the outfield, those, uh, those bleacher seats out there, those fans can... They could have some fun with you. Pretty Ballinger pops one up. Might be playable in foul ground, and it is for Ed Lucas. Two away. Did you ever have a tough time, you know, just just keeping it out, keeping that noise out? or No, I, I, I didn't. Or? I didn't. You know, I think my rookie year was probably the most difficult time because I hadn't played in front of crowds like that. And... and you know, first time I'm in Yankee Stadium, we're playing. It's a Saturday day game, you know, game of the week. You know, bases are loaded. Dave Winfield's hitting. Don Sutton's pitching for us. And, I mean, I couldn't hear a thing, nothing. The crowd was just going crazy, and I got caught up in it. Fortunately, he didn't hit the ball to me because <laughs> it would have been an error if he had. But just, you know, I'll always remember that. It was just so loud. It was louder than anything I had ever been used to. You know, obviously playing in the minor leagues all that time. Uh, never just, you know, being in that position. Mayora pops one up near first. Rosales is there. And got to tell you, Kosuke Tomita, pretty efficient. That's what I see as we go to the ninth inning. Last chance for the Rangers, trailing 10 to 5.
10-5 Dodgers. As you take a look at Kosuke Tomita. Nice job there. Hey, and here's a shirt that uh, I was given that you can have too, by the way. Mac, you, fans, May 12th, Kansas City Royals for 15,000 fans, 14 and older, get a never, ever quit t-shirt. Sponsored by Dr. Pepper and CVS for tickets. Go to TexasRangers.com. I like that. I think I might have to put that one in my bag, maybe. <laughs> we may need it for our next broadcast, though. So. Oh, okay. After right. Tuesday, you can After have it. After Tuesday. Okay, got Cheers. it. Chris Hatcher on to pitch for the Dodgers as we go to the ninth inning. They lead by five. And he will be the... Only the fourth pitcher today for Los Angeles. Thomas Field hits high in the air, right center. Will be handled by the center fielder Lavin for round number one. And now Jake Smolinski. This is Chris Hatcher's eighth game in the spring. ERA is a little high. He's trying to turn that around and. Retire the Rangers here in order. He's given up six runs, six strikeouts, and six innings. 30 year old right hander, formerly with the Marlins organization. He played for both the Miami Marlins and the Florida Marlins. Big league experience and he gets Smolinski to foul one off the count one and one. Hatcher was a catcher originally as this one bounced up the middle. Nice backhand stop by Mayora and can't quite get it to first base in time. Smolinski beats out an infield hit. Nice play by Mayor. Can't just get into that ball and had to go down a little bit, bounced back up and almost made a spectacular play, almost able to finish it off here. Smolenski driving this ball back up the middle, right through the box. Mayor gets it, gets to his feet, off balance throw, pretty accurate, just not in time to get Smolenski at first. Now Carlos Piguero. Man on one out. Rangers need a lot of base runners in this ninth inning. They did score three runs in the third inning, and they added runs in the seventh and eighth. in there by Hatcher. Hatcher, you know, I mentioned that he was a converted catcher. And we've seen a lot of that, especially this spring. It seems to me a lot of guys who have been converted one way or the other and, and have had some success making it to the big leagues. He's interesting because he made the big leagues as a catcher. And then the next time into the big leagues, he was a pitcher. That's pretty that's pretty impressive. No, that's not pretty impressive. That's very impressive. I don't know how guys do it. It's tough enough to make it to the big leagues at one position, but then to make it at, at another position, that's that's really good. Bergero fouls it off. It's two and two. I mean, it takes some serious talent to pull that off. There are very few guys that have been able to do that. I think the one that comes to mind that's probably had the most success is probably uh, Rick and Keel. That was amazing go. to yeah. me. Amazing to me how you could be a young phenom pitcher and things didn't turn out so well after a couple of years and come back and be a power hitting outfielder. Center fielder, not a corner guy, a center fielder. That was amazing to me. Piguero down looking. He's in a, Piguero's in a bit of a scuffle lately. Yeah, he's had a lot of strikeouts his last few games. But he's got a lot of potential. Got a lot of power. Big kid. 
Up to Ed Lucas now to try and continue this afternoon for the Rangers. And he'll take strike one. You know, you make the point about Ankeel. And there are probably a lot of people who don't either A, remember that he was originally a pitcher because there was a little spread of time there that mm -hmm. took him to make that transition. But he wasn't just a pitcher. I mean, he was a stud yes, pitcher. Yes, he was. My goodness, he was big time. Until that postseason just kind of rattled him and he was never able to corral it again. One strike pitch and Lucas bounces it right back to Hatcher. And he'll make the underhand toss to first to end the ball game. Well, Rangers couldn't quite muster what they needed there at the end today and falls short in Glendale. 10-5, the final score. Dodgers win this one this afternoon. And we'll be back with a little bit more after this.